Queen Marquesa versus Leovold, Emissary of Trest, with all of our mana and a Sol Ring, so let's definitely keep that. We are on the play. Let's hope our opponent doesn't have a, um, what's it called, that card? Mental Misstep. Get down the Graven Cairns, going for the Sol Ring. That comes straight down, so no. Zero mana counters from our opponent. Alright, let's get down a Scrubland, because that will come in untapped. And then we're going to have to go for Distress here. We can choose a non-land card from our opponent's hand here. So let's see what they've got. They have a Ristic Study, a Snap Mage, Jace, Days Undoing, and Chromatic Lantern. I think we go Ristic Study there. And then we're going in for our Queen Marquesa next turn, by the looks of it. They play the Windswept Teeth, which we know about already. And then Preordain is what they've just drawn into, so we know all the cards that are in their hand, apart from the one that they're about to get into with the Preordain. Alright, a Dragon Skull Summit into Queen Marquesa is the way to go here, I think. She comes down... Gives us the monarchy and we've got haste. Don't think we'll see much haste from Leovald. There might be a lightning greaves in the deck. But we'll start pecking away at our opponent and drawing cards. The more removal we can get into for the Leovald, the better. <laughs> a mana vault from our opponent, so both getting into fast mana. Going into that chromatic lantern that we knew about. They have played the Misty Rainforest, which now taps for mana thanks to the Chromatic Lantern. And then into Necropotent, so we know what they've drawn into. We also know three of the cards that are in their hand. Now I'm actually going to leave Necropotence in play, I think, because it keeps our opponent from drawing cards. Unless they get into a bunch of wheels, that is. Which Leovold does want to do. What did they discard there? They got rid of Painful Truths. Alright, so I think it might be time for a Castigate for our opponent. Let's swing in with the Queen Marquesa first. Our land situation is not great at the moment. Because we've missed a land drop this turn. But we'll see if we can slow down our opponent any with a Castigate. Okay, there is an Imperial Seal. A Tezzeret the Seeker. If Tezzeret goes for the Shackles, we can get rid of it with Unexpectedly Absent. We can also get rid of it with Hero's Downfall, uh, the Planeswalker that is. So I think we go for the Tutor here. We'll get rid of Imperial Seal. And then that's it. Just pass over to our opponent and hope that we draw into a land here. Not that we'll be able to play it. Him to Torak isn't awful. That might mess up our opponent. But not getting into mana is, yeah, especially when our opponent keeps hitting their lands... That's not good for us. Serum Visions, another cantrip spell for our opponent. And then it is Jace the Mind Sculptor that they've decided on. So they're obviously not drawing into the things they want to draw into. Now are they going for the Unsummon or the Brainstorm? Oh, they go for the plus on Jace trying to fate seal us. Let's see if they put this card on the top or the bottom. They put it on the bottom, so I think that was either removal or a land. Okay, we're getting to Council's Judgment. So, hmm, we can't go for Council's Judgment, unfortunately. Yeah, we'll have to go for Hero's Downfall. Oh, missing lands is awful. I'd like to go for him to Torak and Hero's Downfall, or Bastion Protector and Hero's Downfall. In fact, we can get rid of Jace with Queen Marquesa and him to Torak, can't we? Yeah, so let's go Bastion Protector, him to Torak on our opponent, making use of the Urborg here, although we could have made double black anyway. And uh, they get rid of the Wheel and the Wasteland. Yeah, getting rid of Wasteland is good there, because I dare say they would have gone for that onto our Scrubland. And let's get rid of this Jace while we've got the chance. And we're just going to try and encourage our opponent to keep going with the Necropotence. Disenchant, we're not getting into lands. Why aren't we getting into lands here? 
Our opponent continuing to make their land drops, though. I mean, they do have Necropotence, so... The chances of them getting into lands are... Much higher. Get rid of that day's undoing. We only know of Tezzeret and Snap Mage at the moment. And they go for the Tezzeret. They can't activate the... Yeah, they're going for the untap there. I was going to say they can't activate the Shackles if they go for that. I think that's two mana for the Vidalcan Shackles. So just going for the untap. They might be trying to distract us with the Tezzeret. Uh, okay. Still no mana. Let's go for the Hero's Downfall onto Tezzeret first of all, because that might dictate what we do with the rest of the turn. Oh, and I've tapped the mana wrong as well. I actually should have gone for red from the Graven Cairns. Ugh, that feels bad. We could have gone for a Braid onto the Mana Vault. Or the, uh, yeah, probably the Mana Vault. Mmm, that feels bad. Well... Our man is screwed up here anyway, so let's just hit our opponent. Four, five, six, seven, eight. They can go for the Snap Mage as a blocker. And that's what they're doing. That's fine with me. It's better than Snap Mage into Mana Drain or anything like that. And we won't lose any creatures here either. Really wish I'd gotten rid of that Mana Vault though. Blocking the most damage from Queen Marquesa. And they've only got two cards left in hand now, none of which we know what they are. Still not getting into lands. I don't know what the hell's going on here. We've drawn a lot of extra cards with the monarchy. And if our opponent gets down Leovold into a wheel, that might be the end of us. Okay, Cyclonic Rift. That smells like a wheel to me. Unless they're just trying to buy themselves some time. They're down to one card in hand. They might have a counter in hand. And if they don't, they'll certainly get into one with Necropotent, surely. <sighs> Alright, well, Duress. Let's try... Let's try the Sol Ring, first of all. Let's go for the Bastion Protector. And we'll go for a Duress on our opponent as well. Duress should hit, because this is a low curve our opponent's running. Alright, a Sword of Feast and Famine, Knight's Whisper, Crucible of Worlds, a Mana Crypt, what do they want out of that? Probably the Sword of Feast and Famine. No, I think they might actually want the Knight's Whisper to try and get into a wheel. They want to go for their commander into a wheel. The less cards they can draw, the better. So I'm actually going to go for Knight's Whisper there. Alright, finally getting into a land, and of course it's a colourless land, because why wouldn't it be? Uh, so what do we discard here? Let's go for the Austere Command. Oh, and we've got to discard something else as well. All right, then. Had I have used that Abraid, we wouldn't have had to discard here. Uh, that is three damage to a creature. That's actually removal for... Hmm, what to do here? We'll go Damnation as well. Now our opponent's going to be dealt a damage by the Mana Vault. They get into another land drop. I don't think they've missed one this game, have they? They've got four, five, six. It's their turn seven, so they've missed one land drop. Again, we know what's in their hand, though. There is the Command Tower. They haven't played Mana Crypts for obvious reasons, and they get down their Leovold. Now the saving grace here, as our opponent just thinks about what they want to do, the saving grace is that we know that we can get down Queen Marquesa currently. Might be that our opponent, okay, they decide to go in for the sword by the looks of it. Yeah, they are going for it. I think they might have been deciding on whether or not they wanted to go for Necropotence and try and hold up counter magic, but they're just deciding against it here, so we know of Mana Crypt and the sword. We know they've got a land to make next turn. Finally getting into some mana. Still don't have double white though. So let's go mounting. And we'll see if our opponent has any free counter magic. Then we'll go a braid onto the Sword of Feast and Famine. And our opponent will unfortunately draw. Puts them a step closer to a wheel. 
but this just means that we can actually swing in with Queen Marquesa and it might make their life difficult. We force them to block here pretty much. So that gets rid of their Leovold. They go down to two. And they might even want to untap the Mana Vault here. They have to win the Mana Crypt flip first. They are deciding to untap Mana Vault. Looks like they win the Mana Crypt flip because it's Leovold, so of course he does. <laughs> My opponent's probably going to win from here. They play the land that we knew about. Might be worth getting rid of the Urborg with the Tech Edge. And then if we can get rid of Chromatic Lantern as well, it'll really mess up their mana. Looks like they're going in for their commander again. Yeah, there is the Leovold. Do they have a wheel is the question. <laughs> Dark Confident, that's risky. But they're just going to use it as a blocker, I imagine. We could just not swing in at them. Alright, going for one more card with Necropotence. And they've got three cards in hand, one of which is Crucible. We know about that already. Let's go Tech Edge. I'm going to go for Disenchant onto the Chromatic Lantern. They will draw another card. And then we'll get rid of the Urborg as well. So they're drawing two cards here, one from us targeting the Lantern and one from the Urborg. So as far as I can tell here, they've only got one, two, three pieces of coloured mana, which is probably plenty for them, to be honest. Now this is creatures, isn't it? Oh no, two damage to any target. All right, well, we'll go for that then, see if we can put our opponent out of his misery. Should have gone for that in the first place, but... But I thought that that only dealt damage to a creature. Okay, so we'll go target player discards a card, target player is dealt two damage. Yeah, I should have gone for that in the first place because my opponent might have drawn counter magic here, but like we said, their coloured mana is all messed up. <laughs> okay, I didn't get a chance to respond to my opponent there because it's just sent me out into the lobby straight away. Uh, but they commented on how lucky I was in my draws. Our, don't forget, our opponent had a Mana Crypt of their own, a Mana Vault, and a Necropotence. So, yeah, they drew into a hell of a lot of cards there. Uh, the fact that we could get rid of some key pieces from them with our discard is what helped us to win that one, I think. Not the fact that we got into Fast Mana. If I get into Fast Mana, and my opponent gets into Fast Mana, then we're on an even playing field as far as I can see and uh, that's what happened today but as usual the type of people that run spiky Leovold decks tend to be salty when they lose so being called lucky when we won fair and square isn't something I really appreciate but beating out Leovold is always a pleasure so hopefully you all enjoyed that one I'm Travel Kai on the EDH channel. Thank you for watching.